The true biography of Felix Manalo is a good, written and created by your humble servant, Jerry Cahelon. Just call me Tatang JC. Thank you very much. Before I proceed, my very dear brothers and sisters, friends, countrymen, and acquaintances, may you please don't forget to like, share my videos, and subscribe also to my YouTube channel so you can easily follow through on my next significant manifestations or testimonies. Thank you very much. Part 22 of the biography of Felix Manalo is a good. Sir Felix Y. Manalo's attention shifted to the families that possess massive wealth and power in the South, those being the Lopez, Rojas, Zobel, Villegas, and Rodriguez families. It was so noticeable of him to dispatch many ministers and church makers, including the construction of many chapels or houses of worship to attract the attention of wealthy political candidates and parties in order to utilize his sacred and magical inflated or black vote of his spurious church for all the elections. Oh, why so? The reason was because an election, whether local or national, was the most valuable and primary diggings, spring, or source of monetary benefits and estate holdings for the cult and spurious Iglesia Ni Cristo, Inc. Corporation founded by Sir Felix Y. Manalo. Sir Felix Y. Manalo succeeded in winning over the southern part of the country due to his connections with corrupt political candidates during elections. Sir Felix Y. Manalo would endorse these candidates who in turn would give him large sums of money and land properties. The success of Sir Felix Y. Manalo in the south of the country made it easier for him to acquire medical treatment in the United States of America for his ulcer and diabetes. Of course, using the earned dollars through charity donations per se. During this time, our currency called the peso was being used in our country, yet the peso could not be simply exchanged into the American currency called the dollar because America still controlled the monetary system in the Central Bank of the Philippines. For a person to have undergone such a medical operation or treatment in America, they must have had great influence and power in the government to acquire the dollar funds necessary for the treatment. One good example is Mr. Endenko Wanko, 
who was the grandfather of the Aquino's family and relative of the families of Juanco who owned the Hacienda Luisita. He was very rich with money in many Philippine banks during the time but still died quickly of a liver disease, and why so? Despite being rich in pesos, he couldn't get treatment from America because he didn't have enough American dollars. Unlike Sir Felix Waimanalo, who easily and quickly got the operation and treatment in America for his deadly ulcer and diabetes, and why so? Well, during this time, the cult and spurious Iglesia Ni Cristo Inc. Corporation of Sir Felix Waimanalo was already extremely rich with worldly treasures on earth. Of course, not very rich with treasures in heaven. Along with this event, which should not be set aside nor denied, is the intercourse between Sir Felix Y. Manalo and the country's president, Ramon F. Magsaysay, who came from his home province of Zambales in the northern part of the country. The truth is that Sir Felix Y. Manalo was secretly indignant to him because the northern part of our country is the nesting place of his enemies, his former allies, who were Teodoro Santiago, Teofilo Ora, Basilio Santiago, Januario Ponce, Raimundo Masilungan, and Cirilo Gonzalez, who established their own churches. These mountainous regions were the hooks hiding hated his outrageousness, greed in money, lies, and politics. The spurious Iglesia de Cristo Inc. Corporation of Sir Felix Y. Manalo and the wealthy brothers Fernando and Eugenio Lopez from the southern part of the country heavily considered the purchase of extensive Hacienda Luisita and all its contents from the group of Spanish owners, the Compañía General de Tabacos de Filipinas, known by its name Tabacalera. Along this was the manufacturing and trading of tobacco and the sugarcane industry with the production of sugar known as the Central Azucalera the Tarlac. But President Ramon F. Magsaysay was apprehensive about the purpose of the Tabacalera. He did not want the risk and lose the progress, the livelihood, security of its workers and poor farmers in North and Central Luzon. So, the President proposed the sale instead to the family of the Kowanko. The wealthy families from Northern and Central Luzon, together with Senator Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr. from Ilocos, assisted the Kowanko family in transacting the sale with the financing banks. Included in the sale was the agreement to divide and distribute the estate properties at such a given time to all residing farmers in accordance with the law. In short, President Ramon F. Magsaysay blocked the purchase of Hacienda Luisita by the Lopez brothers along with the spurious Church of Sir Felix. From that point on, Sir Felix Y. Manalo secretly hated and became bitter towards President Ramon Magsaysay. Due to 
the malicious and vengeful attitude of Sir Felix Wymanalo, he aimed to persecute his enemies. He ordered his brethren or members from his fraternal church who were working inside the Hacienda Luisita to go on strikes and wage protests to paralyze the industry in 1955. These strikes were followed by a block of all work in the industry and resignations of laborers to demonstrate the power of unity possessed by the cult and spurious Iglesia de Cristo Inc. Corporation. In contrary to the latter event, a separate incident like this was talked about by the church members of Sir Felix and wherein some of them were forced, per se, to resign from work or labor force in Hacienda Luisita by the United Luisita Workers Union, ULWU, during the time of President Ramon Magsaysay. The truth about the former incident, the members of the spurious Iglesia de Cristo Inc. Corporation willfully stopped working and resigned to demonstrate their unity per se, their power to persecute per se, and their vengeance per se, because they were halted in acquiring Tabacalera. The forced termination from ULWU members of the church or co-church of Sir Felix happened in 1965, which is a different incident from this 1955 event. There were many reasons still unknown or unexplained. Unfortunately, on March 17, 1957, still for unknown reasons per se, the airplane carrying President Ramon F. Magsaysay, together with 24 passengers, crashed on Mount Manungal in Balamban, Cebu Island. The President, including all of the passengers, died in the crash except for one survivor. When Sir Felix Y. Manalo heard the news about the accident, he uttered, so thanks. He was happy for the deadly accident instead of showing compassion to the death of a man who truly cared for his country. Following this event, in the years 1958, the Hacienda Luisita fell into the hands and became the property of the Kowanko and Aquino families with help and assistance of President Carlos P. Garcia and lawyer Senator Ferdinand E. Marcos. However, regarding the death of President Ramon F. Magsaysay, almost all the citizens of the country in the Philippines had mourned the people who experienced peace and benefited from the agricultural prosperity continued to give tribute to him annually, except the brethren of Sir Felix Wymana. The cult and spurious church of Sir Felix became very indignant and hateful ever since the Kowanko and Aquino families acquired the ownership of Hacienda Luisita, including the prosperous industry in it. Early in the year 1961, the upcoming national election on November 14 for the local government officials and presidency was again resonating in every corner of the country. Sir Felix Wymanalo secretly ordered his trusted tentacles or allies to listen and observe around for candidates and political parties that were being eyed or favored by the general public. In this way, the spurious Iglesia de Cristo Inc. Corporation could suitably select the winning card 
candidate or political party to greatly benefit from it. In, order, in other words, the cold and spurious church or iglesia of Sir Felix Waimanalo would again promote its block voting scheme in politics. It was vital to know where and who had the most money and treasures so that they could greatly benefit from them again. This election would also serve as a form of training in the inherent outrageousness for the inheritor and son of Sir Felix, none other than Mr. Eranio G. Manalo. To my very dear brothers and sisters, friends, countrymen, and acquaintances, may you please stay tuned for the upcoming conclusion or last part of the biography of Sir Felix Manalo is a good in my next presentation on the Internet of the Cyber World. Again, to my very dear brothers and sisters, friends, countrymen and acquaintances, may you please don't forget to like Share my videos and subscribe also to my YouTube channel so you can easily follow through on my next significant manifestations or testimonies. Thank you very much.